What does the Bible say about marriage? In the beginning, God created humans as male and female, and for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Therefore, God intended marriage and intercourse to be for men and women only, not for same-sex couples. We all came from Adam and Eve, so in the beginning, God allowed humans to marry their siblings or relatives. But as time went on, there is enough population for people to intermarry with. So, God has forbidden marriage and intercourse with a close relative, which you can read in detail in Leviticus chapter 18, because the result of this kind of relationship always leads to a baby born with birth defects. Marriage is not like eating hot food, which you can spit out when you get burnt. It's a major decision for the rest of your life, so you cannot put away your spouse whenever you want to. Because what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. A married couple can only separate when one of them has committed adultery, and or marry someone else when one of them has already passed away. Any reason other than this is the sin of adultery, and whosoever commits adultery has no part in the kingdom of God. Even if your spouse is an unbeliever, don't separate with him or her either, because you might be the one God will use to save your spouse, and of him or her being sanctified with your children. But if your unbelieving spouse wants to leave you, let him or her depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. That's why it is better if you get married with someone of the same faith as you, to avoid misunderstandings and eventual separation and that you may teach your children as well in the right faith. Your spouse or ex-spouse in this world is not your spouse in heaven, but they will become your brother or sister in Christ, because in the resurrection people will neither marry nor will be given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven, that don't need to get married or reproduce. Anyway, speaking of marriage, Satan has perverted the sanctity of it because even gays or lesbians are getting married as well now. And there are some religions like Islam which allow men to marry up to four women, even an adult man marrying a child, which is so sick and perverted. Stories such as these are often suppressed and are very difficult to investigate. Even in the hospitals of the capital, there are frequently cases of girls admitted for problems associated with child bride weddings. At the Al Sabin Hospital in Sana'a, Dr. Salwa Al Gamari has dealt with many such complicated cases. Uh, for example, we have uh, one girl, she was around 14 years old, and she brought to the hospital after, in, in, in her first night after marriage. After her first sex, she developed a very bad tear in her vaginal wall, and she developed a very severe bleeding. Actually, she was brought to our hospital once she she is in very bad condition she was shocked she she she, she was the uh, nearing the death and the actual was happened she 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 died and believe it or not there are some people who marry animals some even marry sex dolls or anything which they have a fetish with it is also rampant in today's society for unmarried couples to live together and have sex and that is why more and more teenagers are getting pregnant and giving birth at such a young age Remember, even if you are in a monogamous relationship, but you are not yet married, your partner is still not your spouse. And we know that whosoever lusts after someone who is not his or her spouse is guilty of adultery. Also, anyone who has sex with someone other than his or her spouse is guilty of fornication, and all adulterers and fornicators have no part in the kingdom of God. So, for couples who engage in premarital sex, my advice is it is better for you to marry than to burn. Do it right away while there is opportunity, before the mark of the beast becomes fully implemented. Now if you think there is no legal marriage in the Bible, then think again. And study the meaning of the word betrothed and espoused, referred to in these verses, because it's not automatic that you are already husbands and wives with the person you're having sex with, even if you say that you love each other. And don't compare your situation to Adam and Eve neither, because God himself joined them together and blessed them. And if you're not yet in the legal age to marry, it is better to stop any sexual contact with your partner until you are legally married. 
If you are a young woman, always remember this. If your boyfriend really loves you, he should be patient to wait for both of you to get married first before you engage in sex. Because love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. So if your boyfriend doesn't have these qualities, that means it is not the love that he has for you, but lust. And the only thing he's after is your body. As for married women, God's command is for you to submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so must the wives be unto their husbands in everything. So, if you are a rebellious woman who refuses to submit to your husband, you're simply sinning against God and what the Bible teaches, because you refuse to submit to the natural order that he has ordained. Remember, the first woman came from the first man. Eve was created by God out of Adam's rib to help Adam to dress and keep the garden. So the man was not created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Nevertheless, all things are of God. So even though the woman came from the man, the man is also born of the woman. Therefore, the man still needs the woman, and the woman also needs the man. For married couples, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So do not deprive each other of sexual relations, unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time, so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. Afterwards, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. As for married men, love your wives as your own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hate his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Love your wives as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself to be a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The church being referred to here is not a religion or sect, but us the followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we are the body of Christ, or the members that make up his body. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink in one spirit. And God has set each of us with different functions in the body of Christ as it pleases him. That is why not everyone is ordained by him to be an apostle, for example, or a prophet, or a teacher. And why not everyone is gifted with the working of miracles, the gifts of healings, the speaking with tongues, and the interpretations of it. So, do not believe any religion or sect that says that they are the only ones who will be saved. Because we, the followers of Christ, are the temple of God, wherein the Holy Spirit dwells. And the Holy Spirit is the seal of God, whereby we are all sealed unto the day of redemption. And whether you are a male or a female, we are the bride of Christ, which Paul likened unto a chaste virgin, espoused to one husband, who is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. His return is the day of our marriage to him, and he will take us with him through the rapture and save us from God's wrath or the destruction of this world and the ungodly. So, on that day, make sure you are wearing your wedding garments, a fine linen, clean and white, which symbolizes the righteousness of the saints, granted only by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because whosoever is not wearing wedding garments shall be cast into outer darkness, wherein there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May Jesus bless you.